By the end of the 1920s, battleship construction around the world was effectively at a standstill since 1923 when the Washington Naval Treaty went into effect. The treaty did allow the three major navies of the world, the United States Navy, the Royal Navy, and the Imperial Japanese Navy, to complete a couple of battleships each armed with 16-inch guns, and in this category the United States would come out with the numerical advantage having three Colorado-class battleships, the Colorado, West Virginia, and Maryland. The halt of battleship construction following the completion of the three Navy 16-inch armed battleships put an awkward unbalance of power when it came to battleship offensive and defensive qualities, especially when compared to the numerically superior battleships armed with 12, 13.5, and 14-inch guns with varying degrees of design inferiorities. As a result, the world's five major navies, including France and Italy, would modernize their battleships, updating their defensive and offensive qualities, along with making other minor improvements. However, it was clear that a new generation of battleships would need to be constructed, and the London Naval Conferences would decide the fate of how future battleships would be designed, with Britain proposing that battleships should be focused more on defensive qualities, which meant light armor along with small caliber guns. On the other hand, navies wanted to improve upon the most previous generation of battleships increasing offensive power, which meant larger vessels with greater armor protection and equivalent or greater caliber guns. The late 1920s and early 1930s would see relations around the world begin to deteriorate, and before long, Japan announced that it would not be signing any more naval treaties with Western powers, which meant by 1936, the Washington Naval Treaty would expire and battleship construction would be unrestricted. As for the United States, between 1931 and 1934, they had investigated a series of preliminary battleship designs, with the largest design being proposed having a standard displacement of 72,000 tons, a top speed of 30 knots, and a main armament consisting of six 20-inch guns. The vessel had dimensions that permitted it to pass through the Panama Canal. 1935 would see a shift in the direction the preliminary designs would take, as on the 21st of August that year, the Chief of Naval Operations asked for ships to be designed for defensive use upon minimum displacements, keeping in mind that Britain wanted to build smaller, inferior ships in greater numbers. Eight designs would be produced in the so-called defensive series, with a displacement low of 23,000 tons and a displacement high of 40,000 tons, and main battery armament of eight 12-inch 50 caliber guns as the low, and nine 16-inch 50 caliber guns as the high, with a minimum speed of 20 knots and a maximum speed of 30 knots, and a main side armor belt anywhere from a low of 9 inches to a high of 17 inches. The United States Navy could not make a combination with these characteristics to design a battleship that had good defensive qualities, as the ships were either classified as death traps or ineffective. Design 5 was the one that came closest to an ideal future battleship that could theoretically be built and have some degree of effect in battle without being a death trap for those on board. Design 5 had a standard displacement of 32,500 tons, with a main armament consisted of six 14-inch 50 caliber guns in two triple turrets, one forward and one aft, and the vessel had a top speed of 30 knots. The ship's protection offered it good chances in a defensive role, but should the vessel ever need to be placed in an offensive role, it would fail greatly. With the defensive series being a clear dead end, a new series of designs was requested, and eight vessels were designed under what has been named the General Board Series. The General Board Series of battleships were of more conventional designs, based off the most previous generation of U.S. battleships, which were the Colorados. The weakest vessels had eight 14 inch 50 caliber guns, while the strongest had nine 14 inch 50 caliber guns with a displacement low of 31,000 tons and a displacement high of 40,000 tons, and speed for the designs usually sat around 30 knots, though designs G and H had a maximum speed of 23 knots. 
designs G and H were created in order to offset the extreme cost of having a battleship with good offensive and defensive qualities and a high speed. With the General Board series also reaching a dead end, the United States Navy started a new project called Battleship 1937 with a new set of ideal characteristics based on the results of the Defensive and General Board series. Battleship 1937 was not just going to be another series of preliminary designs, but in the year of 1937, the United States Navy intended to choose a design and order it for construction. The basic design requirements outlined that the battleship should have 12 14-inch 50 caliber Mark 11 guns, it needed to have a protection system that could defend it against its own caliber guns at normal battle ranges, along with having an adequate protection system to defend it against the largest conceivable projectile that could be developed within its estimated 25-year lifespan. It also needed to have a torpedo defensive system that could withstand a 700-pound torpedo warhead. The propulsion system needed to be capable of pushing the ship upwards of 30 knots maximum speed. Habitability needed to be improved over previous United States battleships, which included more comfortable sleeping quarters, a larger enclosed superstructure, and improved ventilation and air conditioning systems. The increased cost for this motion would improve crew efficiency and morale. A total of 77 official designs would be produced. For the sake of time, the most important one for this video would be Design 16. 16 had a standard displacement of 35,000 tons, a waterline length of 714 feet, a waterline beam of 105 feet, a maximum draft of 32 feet 4 inches, an armament of 12 14 inch 50 caliber guns in three quadruple turrets, two turrets forward and one aft. It had 12 5 inch 38 caliber guns in six dual turrets, along with four 5 inch 38 caliber guns in four single turrets. And finally, it had 16. 1.1 inch Chicago piano anti-aircraft guns in four quadruple mounts. Its maximum speed would be 27 knots with 115,000 shaft horsepower and it had a maximum endurance of 15,000 nautical miles at 15 knots. The main armor belt was 12.4 inches thick, inclined at 15 degrees. The turret faceplates were 16 inches thick while the turret tops were 8 inches with the barbettes being 15 inches. The main armor deck was 5.1 inches, and it was backed with a 0.6 inch splinter deck, and that was backed by a 0.25 inch secondary splinter deck. The arrangement of the propulsion system is also worth noting, as it was in four primary compartments, with the forward two compartments being the boiler rooms, and the after two compartments being the turbine rooms, this meant that the uptakes converged into a single large funnel located amidships. Design 16 was selected for further improvements in order to create the final design, and the primary improvements would be in the arrangement of the propulsion system in order to reduce the amount of openings between primary protective bulkheads. The engineering spaces would be retained in four primary compartments, but they would now be paired with two boilers in one turbine in each of the four engine rooms. This alteration in the boiler arrangement meant that the uptake design needed to be redesigned, and two funnels were now necessary, with one funnel servicing four boilers between the two engine rooms each. It was also decided to remove all four of the single mount 5 inch 38 caliber guns and replace them with 10 dual mount 5 inch 38 caliber guns which increased the overall number of the secondary battery by four barrels. The ship's defensive system was also altered in light of these new arrangements and in order to milk as much speed out of the ship as possible. So the final contract design characteristics were a ship that had a standard displacement of 35,000 tons with a full load displacement of 42,330 tons, a waterline length of 714 feet, a waterline beam of 104 feet, a draft of 31 feet 6 inches, shaft horsepower of 115,000, propelling the ship at 27.5 knots. The maximum endurance increased to 17,450 nautical miles at 15 knots, 
The main armament would remain as 12 14-inch 50 caliber guns and three quadruple turrets with two forward and one aft. The secondary battery would now be 25-inch 38 caliber guns in 10 dual mounts, and the anti-aircraft battery would be 16 1.1-inch guns in four quadruple mounts with a handful of 50 caliber machine guns to supplement them. The main armor belt was reduced to 11.7 inches, but it was still inclined at 15 degrees. The turret faceplates would retain their 16 inch thickness, though the rooftops would now reduce to 7.8 inches, with the barbettes being 15 inches. The main armor deck over magazines would be 6.3 inches, while over machinery spaces it would be 5.3 inches. With the design having been finalized and accepted, a contract was sent out for bids on the 4th of May 1937, and two shipyards would win, the New York Navy Yard and the Philadelphia Navy Yard. The two shipyards would begin assembling working plans, and they would also begin to order frames, armor plates, and other components for the construction of the ships, and then disaster struck, as I stated earlier in the video, that Japan did not sign further treaties with Western nations, and this meant battleship construction was effectively unregulated, and the United States had confirmation that Germany, France, and Italy were all building battleships armed with 15-inch guns, while Japan was suspected to be building battleships with 16-inch guns, though in reality they were 18.1-inch guns. On the 21st of June 1937, the United States Navy made a leap and opted to request the main battery be changed from the 14-inch 50 caliber guns to nine 16-inch 45 caliber guns in three triple turrets with two forward and one aft as initially designed. While the United States Navy awaited approval on the armament increase, the keel to battleship 55 was laid down at the New York Navy Yard on the 27th of October 1937. Then, in November of 1937, approval came for the increase in the caliber of the main battery armament. Fortunately, the United States Navy had prepared themselves for the 16-inch armament to be approved over the 14-inch, and so the turrets were designed to be of similar size and mass when compared to the quadruple 14-inch turret, and the barbettes were the exact same size, which meant that a quadruple 14-inch turret and a triple 16-inch turret could be interchangeable. Only minor alterations were necessary for the barbed structures, including the roller paths, and ammunition handling equipment. With that, construction would continue, though at a slightly slower pace due to design alterations being made, so the vessel was not launched until the 13th of June 1940, and it was commissioned on the 9th of April 1941 as USS North Carolina. Battleship 56 was laid down on the 14th of June 1938 at the Philadelphia Navy Yard. It was launched on the 1st of June 1940 and commissioned on the 15th of May 1941 as USS Washington. While North Carolina and Washington would not see extensive service against hostile battleships as they were designed for, their service in the Pacific Theater during the Second World War for the United States Navy was extreme, the vessels were both well decorated, and their contributions cannot be understated. These are most certainly some of the most important battleships the United States Navy would construct. With that having been said, there is nothing more to add on to this topic for today. So, if you have learned something new in this video, why not leave a like and a comment down below, and have a wonderful day.